Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Uh, this is the Anti Church Friday, usually afternoon, but today the morning. Uh, time of Q and A uh, and an open forum for everybody to get their thoughts out here. Uh, if there's any question, anything you wanted to bring up, any thoughts, any theories, ideas, you want to challenge me on something or something you heard, something you read, anything with the Bible or God or current events, whatever. Um, doesn't matter. So this time is set aside for you folks to um, ask what you want or make statements if you must, uh, whatever. It's time is for you. So I do have somewhere to be this afternoon, so I couldn't do it the normal uh, 4 p.m. time. So thanks for being flexible. And um, so we're going to do this uh, maximum of 60 minutes. And if it does takes less than that, then so be it. I do want to remind you that this is a function of the End Time Church. We are a 501c3 organization uh, as a church like any other. We have a board of elders. We have a senior pastor, which is me, an associate pastor, Dr. Christopher Anderson. We have worship leader, Taryn. We have many supporters, um, but we want you to be part of what we're doing. And if you are blessed by this time now, time on Monday nights where we study the word together or on Wednesdays when we pray together, whatever, um, please consider joining and giving and being a part of this family because that's what this is. If you don't have a local church, we want to be your church. Um, we want to uh, be a family with you together. Get the End Time Church app, no matter what your decision on that other stuff is, because it's free. It's for all the body of Christ throughout the world. Uh, please go grab that and use it. And uh, maybe you're even watching it on the app right now or on our official web page. Secure site communications happen at endtime.church slash live. You can see all our um, live services there and anything that happens throughout the week. And then also playlists are embedded uh, onto that page of our books of the Bible that we have done or topics that we've done over the past two years. So, anyways, now is the time for you. So go ahead and ask anything you've got. Now is the time. Um, again, there's no no rules. Whatever you want to talk about is fine. It's your call. Um, I got no agenda today. So let's be on it. Anyway, get the app. Share this video right now. If you can on YouTube would be the best because that's how people can see it the, the most. And uh, let's go. Just type it in right there on your page, however you're watching this. Um, I'll check my personal Facebook feed and Twitter and stuff. X account, by the way, you see my name down there. If you're interested in my opinions on the X platform, anti four, M A N T E I four. That's where you go. And all right. So time's yours guys. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I have lots of questions for myself, but I'll keep those to myself. Hey, you shush. All right. We got all the monitoring, all the places where there could be questions. So well, nobody's going to get missed. All right. Bond servant leading it off as usual. Boom. Uh, I mean, as usual, she's actively participating. The scriptures say we are supposed to pray for our leaders. Mm -hmm. and all that <laughs> as you know our time is contentious yes uh, because we are a republic meaning the United States at what point is it okay to speak out against the lawless do you mean leaders when you say pray for our leaders are you talking about leaders that are behaving lawlessly Obviously, you're going to have citizens that are lawless, and that's um, that's kind of the promise of the days that we're in, right? Is that lawlessness would abound, and the man of lawlessness ultimately would 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 come come about and be the antichrist. Um, assuming you mean about leaders, um, you should always provide after obviously serious prayer with the Lord about it. Um, if there is a prophetic correction that needs to happen or that needs to go out to the leader themselves, obviously, which is usually how it goes, 
um, or to the followers of that leader, that's something that should be on the table. Um, but you can't we can't separate that from praying for the leader anyway doesn't matter how bad they are pray for, pray for help no matter how evil they are they happen to be and obviously they can get pretty bad as we've seen in this in this world um we're not at the stage of hitler or mao or even putin um in america at this point but maybe soon um, but pray for them and their salvation and their repentance regardless, right? That should never, ever, ever change. Um, what, what we tend to do as Americans is whatever guy or girl, whatever our party we like, we pray for them to succeed. And if we don't, if they're of the other party, we hate them and we pray for them to fail. It's ridiculous. That's not what God's talking about. It's not about succeeding or failing. It's about salvation. It's about doing justice, righteousness, uh, the things that leaders are supposed to do, protect the innocent, punish the guilty. Basically, that's the role of of government. So is it okay to speak out in a, in, in a prophetic in a prophetic way? Um, you know, like Elijah, like John the Baptist types of ways? Yeah. The leaders, especially those who claim to be Christians. Well, I mean, yeah, I went through that with Donald Trump. And everyone says he's a Christian. It's clear he's not. What do you do about that? Uh, all of our presidents have said they're Christians. And I assume, assume that's what you mean. Governors, almost all of them, almost all throughout our history, Um so whether on the state or the federal level, you have the vast, 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 vast majority uh, claiming Christianity. So it's easy to get bogged down again in, in opinions versus what God wants done. That's where the trouble is. Anyways, good morning, Pastor Manta. Hey, that's me, Mo Cool. What's up? Uh, it's 830. Hey, d- deeply exhausted, man. Yeah, Mo Cool. Pray for Mo Cool's... Um, energy um because uh he's definitely tired a lot and there's something else going on there for sure but that's okay we got you brother god's got you weekend has arrived amen there you go playing to hey this is a good idea for all y'all planning to watch youtube sermons on daniel from 2021 in time church thank you uh easy way to find that is go to endtime.church slash live, the same place where you're potentially watching this right now. Um, and below, you'll see the Daniel series is linked. By the way, we have all, every service we've ever done on a Monday night is all saved on our Roku channel, Apple TV channel. So you don't even need the internet. I guess you need, excuse me, you need the internet to connect to your smart TV, but you don't need a computer. You don't need a phone. Um, doesn't matter how you know tech savvy you are, you can watch it on a, on a TV channel which is cool. But anyway, it's all also on YouTube, at, at least for now, and our um, various ways. So go watch it. Yes, please. And if you have any questions on those or, or whatever, we can, we can interact. Uh, hey, Paula, been a while. What's up? Um, so i just trying to keep an eye on all our pages here. I don't want to miss any questions. Paula says, how close do you think we are to the tribulation? <laughs> um, well, obviously, you're asking for an opinion. So it, this is an opinion, not a scripture. Um, pretty close. <laughs> pretty close, like in the next few years. Um, but not tomorrow. Um, and not in the next few months. The reason I say that is not that I think I know anything more than the next guy. It's because of what we're told in the Bible about how this, when you say the tribulation, I used, we, we should understand that that term is actually only a three and a half year period. The final three and a half years is called the great tribulation. 
the first three and a half years before that is technically not the tribulation. It's the 70th week of Daniel is that whole seven year period. And only the last half is called the great tribulation. Some people use that term to describe the whole seven year period. That's why I'm saying that. So how close is that last seven year period? Again, a couple years off. And that's just a, a guesstimate um, based on, again, the the scriptures that that show us that demonstrate very clearly and i recommend daniel study for this like mo cool said go go over our daniel study special daniel 11 8 and 11 in fact the 11 chapter takes up two whole sermons um because we go verse by verse it's no frills okay no opinions um or no fluff it's just scripture so anyway um we we're told of a of a way we get there. It's not it's not in a vacuum. It doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It's not just like whoops. There's the tribulation. Uh, it, it, there there's a very specific process and how it happens and what nations are involved around Israel and how it all comes about is very meticulously laid out in the scriptures. So that's how we can tell how close we actually are. Um, if you're referring to J- okay. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Um, abomination of desolation is the beginning of the Great Tribulation. That's the first event of the final three and a half years. How close are we to that? Well, we're pretty far. Okay, many, not many years, I guess, but still several years because there has to be a um, a process that gives us the last seven years first, and then we have three and a half years before the abomination happens. Okay, so a little bit that again, the the AOD is, as I say, the abomination of desolation event, which Jesus talks about um, as written in the book of Daniel doesn't just happen. It can't just happen because there's a temple building involved. There is no temple building right now. There's nothing to go sit himself in as the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not here right now. He's not empowered right now. There's no little horn who has any authority at all. There is no person yet to sit in a building that doesn't exist yet. So for just those reasons alone, you can see why it can't be at any time. Okay. I hope that's clear. Uh, Good question from Mo Cool. Have you posted that in the prayer group? You should. You should. Take advantage of the prayer group and the End Time Church app. All of you, everyone watching this. You don't have to be a special member or something. Every Christian in the world can go to the End Time Church app and use it. Use it for prayer. Use it for discipleship. Use it to ask questions. That's what it's there for. Um, Okay, following up on the the leaders and uh, lawlessness and stuff. Because I challenged one of my Congress people uh, and a couple others, I was respectful, but just making sure I don't cross the line. I also rebuked Trump. Yeah, meaning at the time, I guess. Yeah. Um, if you feel led to, yeah, I mean, if you feel led to, and again, if we're respectful and, and you know, be like Jesus in that regard, um, be like John and stuff like that, so you can certainly um, do that. But as we're praying for them and, and their salvation and repentance and the knowledge that the, the leadership, I know, Again, with our with our country and the way our society is, that we tend to get really paranoid about people in government and think they're they have some kind of secret knowledge or something. They don't, or there's some kind of you know, they're just like us. They are lost. They're the same people. They are just as sinful as we. Um, they're just as able to be saved as we. The process is the same for every man, right? So. Just because they have a particular job or were elected to a specific office doesn't mean that they're good or bad. Doesn't mean that they're saved or not. Doesn't mean any of that. Um, I don't know why I'm being led to say that, but it's important to remember that they're just people like you uh, who have the same sin, who have the same weaknesses, um, and can be saved by the same God. And some are. Some are. A lot are.
when did the Antichrist will be known? Or wh- when do you think the Antichrist will be known? Thank you. Um, he won't until after, again, this is going off of what's already written in Daniel, in Revelation, um, the other prophets. The He doesn't have any power at all, and it's probably not known at all, before the ten kings get power. There's ten horns, right? And then the little horn comes up after them. That's Daniel 7. So this one who would be the Antichrist has no power. You probably have no idea who they are. They've never led a country before or an organization. That's Daniel's pretty specific about that. It comes out of nowhere. And he takes over in a way that's different. He doesn't come to power like a normal leader. So it's after these 10 kings are in place that he comes. So we're not there yet. How do the 10 kings, are they in here now? No, they're not. Because again, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, Daniel 11 shows us the process, how the 10 come. And it's through a process of war and uh, sorting out the current Iranian, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, all those guys, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, throw them all in there. They all have to have conflict and major wars between them, mostly between Iran and Turkey. And then once that is settled and the whole region now is redrawn, the map will be redrawn, borders and all that. You'll have four new sections of the Middle East, not Israel. That's still the same. But all the other parts are going to be redrawn. And from that, you get the Ten Kings. And from that, you get the Antichrist. Okay? So it's not a, it's a, a when is not a, 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 like, I can't tell you a year or a month, but you can, you will be able to know once those events happen that you can look possibly to identify them. Okay. But before all that, before all that, it is a fool's errand. It's literally everyone who says they know is lying or they're just deceived. The lying means you know for sure. But anyway, they don't, they're all wrong. Everyone who says they know the Antichrist is wrong. Because God has it set up that way, that he has no power before the end. Uh, just like, you know, I'm doing very good in my church and truly happy there. Well, praise God. Excellent. Hopefully people who are watching this and are engaging with end time church are the quote unquote end time people in their churches. You really have to be. Because the body is screaming out for this true knowledge about these prophetic scriptures. Uh, This question has been plaguing me for quite some time. Okay, good. I mean, good that you're asking. Uh, Were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego eunuchs in the palace of the Babylonian captivity. It doesn't say that they were. Um, be, okay, and the reason maybe is the king ordered Aspenaz, the eunuch serving as his chief, a chief officer, to bring into the palace from the people of Israel some of the royal or noble descent. Daniel 1.3, complete Jewish Bible. Yes, that's, that's, yep, that's what happened. In other versions, such as NASB and NIV, verse 3 states that Aspenaz was the chief of his court officials and not the eunuch serving as his chief officer. Okay, right. So that guy, I think he probably was. Um, but that does that mean, in other words, by extension, just because he, as the chief officer of, the, of, the, um, of Nebuchadnezzar, means that Daniel and his friends would have to be? It doesn't say certainly doesn't detail that act if it happened that's pretty extreme um obviously um especially for we don't know how old they were but they weren't children um they certainly not, were not young babies or anything uh teenagers at least so unless you have some other rationale for that i would say no just because there's a lack of um, evidence or a statement about it.
All right, we're rolling along just fine here. This is the Q&A open forum time for End Time Church. We try to do this every Friday. Uh, please feel free to ask whatever is on your mind. I think I've got something. Here we go. Justin. Hey, brother. Uh, excellent. Okay. Justin is saying this is on my personal Facebook page, so I can't bring it up on the screen. Um, he says, good morning. Question. Do you think that the temple will be a brick and mortar structure or a tent like the one used during the days of Moses? Brick and mortar. 100% sure. Um, Because the first one was, and the second one was, and it's going to be a very bold statement. Um, This whole, this whole drama that produces the, the third temple is very significant. In fact, if Daniel nine, um, we know there has to be a building because it says that the Antichrist sits in it, and it's it says the abomination is placed on a wing of the temple or a corner of the temple building. That's so I'm a hundred percent sure it's brick and mortar. Um, aside from that, the fact that it will be a big structure that will finally be constructed with the permission of the enemies of Israel, not against their wishes, but with their permission. That's that's the whole crux of the covenant with death and Sheol, Isaiah 28, is that it's for the security of Israel. They want to be at rest from war forever, right? They're sick and tired of it. And you can see, even now, you can see how they would get to that point from their enemies, meaning the Islamic enemies. Um, And so to get to that point of uh, guaranteeing their safety, which is what the covenant is all about, they're not relying on God. They're relying on their surrounding nations, which is exactly what, the error of Israel in ancient Israel, right? They went to Assyria. They went to Egypt, they, right? They went to Babylon even for protection, right? So they've, they're going to get all their neighbors. They'll have to be combined into one unit. They all have to come together, and that's only going to happen after these wars that I just talked about in Daniel when they're done. Um, then they can, as a united front, they can come and say, Hey, no problem, Justin. Appreciate you, brother. Um, when, when they're united, they can only at that time can they come and say, "We can guarantee your safety because we're everybody. We're all the all your opponents now are together. You can't like Turkey can't come in today and say, oh, "I'm going to guarantee your safety." When you know millions of people in other countries say, "No, we won't." Right? Egypt can't come and say that if or Saudi can't say anything about it, they're not in a position to dictate to the rest of the Muslim world. right? They all actually have to be on a, under an umbrella. That's what the Ten Kings are about, that they all are together in this. Revelation 17 says the Ten Kings are given one mind, one heart, like one opinion to reign one hour with the beast. So they are part of it. They, they are, they're the part of it. There is no beast kingdom at the end without these 10 and then without the one who speaks for them basically okay that's what we call the antichrist anyways so the part of all that is this temple structure they will actually say you know what we're going to set we're the final status of jerusalem and the temple mount is done now this is the big covenant we muslim nations are agreeing to let you jews claim the temple mount uh, share it with us basically share it with us and build your temple right there. Doesn't mean anything has to be knocked down. Doesn't mean the Dome of the Rock has to go or anything like that. They're just going to build it. And it's to them, it's going to be a great day. And for three and a half years, it works. Anyway, so that's a central feature. It's the central feature of this covenant that comes at the end with the enemies of Israel, you know, saying they're not going to attack her anymore. Therefore, we're going to change the status quo on the Temple Mount and, Let's build this temple and share it, the, the temple mount area. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Very good. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, you're welcome. Oh, cool. No problem. I mean, if there's more to like that question of, of Daniel and his associates, then I'd be willing to look into it more, but I don't just think there is. Uh, so at the start of the tribulation, you, again, you're talking about the last seven years. I, I encourage you to not call it the tribulation. Call it Daniel's 70th week. It be it will be helpful to your people who you are talking to. Um, we won't know who uh, not until the three and a half years. No, we can. The, those who are watching Christians who know the scriptures, and this is important. You can't just stumble on knowing the scriptures about this. You're going to have to know it before. And so, if otherwise, you're going to think it can happen any time. Jesus can come any time. The temple could come any time. The, the Antichrist can come any time. None of that is true. So if we know the, the scriptural procedure and plan, um, then we'll be able to see this little horn emerge after the ten kings come. So we know that's going to be the guy who breaks the deal. In fact, the little horn makes the deal in Daniel 9 with Israel. So at that point, we will know who it is. He's not going He's going to be a nice guy, though. For half the time, right? He's not going to attack Israel. Now, he is going to have wars around Israel still. Again, that's Daniel 11, very, very clear. With Egypt, he's going to have major trouble bringing them into line and maybe with other countries outside of the Middle East, right? But with Israel, he'll, he'll be fine until something changes in the three and a half year, the, the midpoint, right? And what changes is Satan is cast down from heaven and now he's permitted to attack the Jews. So that's why it changes. Okay, so, you know, if you want to be, if you don't, if you think the Antichrist is only when he sits in the temple and persecutes, tries to kill all the Jews and stuff like that, then yes, it doesn't happen until the last three and a half years. But we will know who it is based on who made the deal after the Ten Kings, all that stuff. Okay, I don't want to repeat myself over and over, but that's how it is. Um, with this crazy sponsor and with this crazy rise of anti-Semitism, we know Iran is going to start the big one. Um, hang on, just I see an alert on my my app. All right, we're good. With this crazy rise of anti-Semitism, we know Iran is going to start the big one. Is that war going to halt this hate? Do you think something else first? Not sure this has been asked. It has to simmer down at some point. The anti-Semitism? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. When, when, when Iran invades her neighbors, Turkey, Iraq, Saudi Arabia... Um, it may be they may have the guise of somehow this being about Israel, but I don't think so. Um, so it'll be an inter-Muslim war, civil war, Islam versus Islam, to uh, establish who is right once and for all. It's like if the Protestants and the Catholics went to war. That's what it is. Um, so Israel is on the back burner for that. Will it affect global anti-Semitism? I don't. I don't. I really don't know. This. Um, you would. Th it would be nice for it to simmer down, right, and relax for a while. Uh, per perhaps, perhaps once these other things start happening, and and we see that you know. Well, there's a move to actually unite the Muslim world to accept Israel and to and to give you know the whole temple situation to allow that to happen. Maybe at that point there'll be a down a downgrade, but that's again that's not tomorrow either. So I'm not counting on it. Is my answer on that? Because I don't know. I'm not expecting it. I guess 
I do not understand Genesis 9, 20 to 27 with Noah and the curse of Canaan. Okay. After he got drunk and ham seeing his father's nakedness, it has perplexed me a lot over the years. Any thoughts? Most of the nutty wacko theories pertaining to the end times come from. Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry. I thought that was related. So the, the, the expression seeing his father's nakedness, I think has more to do with what the act was itself. Not that you saw him naked. Um, what part of it is perplexing The why C Canaan was cursed by Noah, by the way, right now by God. Um, it means he slept with his mom. That's what the, that's what the, it's an, I've, I've heard it taught and I think it's right. Uh, it's an idiom for, um, sleeping with your mom and so that's why he was cursed um okay does that help god bless you isaac thanks brother hopefully you're recovering okay the global rioting and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you would hope, I mean, I hope it subsides with, um, well, you know, once Hamas is defeated. Uh, but again, even, even that is a misnomer, right? You, Hamas as a group might be defeated, but that doesn't defeat Islam. I mean, that's what's behind Hamas is the example of Muhammad and the, and the writings of, of the Quran and the Hadith. That's why they do what they do. And that's never going to stop. That, that's why Hezbollah exists. That's why Hamas exists. That's why Islamic Jihad. You can change the names up a thousand times, but the core is still there and it's not going to change. Um, and in fact, that's, I believe that's what the Antichrist himself will use as the justification for invading Jerusalem at the end. This is what God demands. Um, well, this is what I demand as the, Figure of God, whatever. Mokul Mo says, most of the nutty slash wacko theories pertaining to the end times come from pre-tribbers. They give people interested in biblical end times prophecy a bad name. Well, that's definitely true. Because um, it's, you got to fight off bad doctrine half the time just to get to what the Bible actually says. Um. And yeah, sure it does, especially when we're picking rapture dates every couple of months. Oh, this is it now, this is it now, this is it now, and it's not. And guess what? You know, unbelievers are laughing at you now, and the church is losing members like crazy because we believe that's junk. And we're not, you know, this is not, this is, we're caught in a, in a really bad situation where you have two extremes, the two biggest beliefs about end times are totally incorrect one is a millennial where there is no practical application of future prophecy and everything's um spiritualized and the kingdom is you know, the millennium is now and the priesthood is the catholic church or whatever uh, or your church and um there's nothing more to it so there is no reason to study end times versus there's a big reason to study it, but that's because the rapture could happen any time and all the church is going to be taken away. Both those things are equally false. And God forbid if you actually try to stick to the middle line of what the Bible actually teaches about these things, of course, you're called a heretic or non-believer by both camps. The amillennialists will say, oh, you're a dispensationalist. No, I'm not. And the uh, pre-trib rapture believer will say, "Oh, you're you're a non-believer. You don't believe in the gathering to Christ." No, I'm not. I don't. That's not true. And of course, they both betray the Jews. The amillennials totally downplay Israel completely. There's no purpose to have a Jewish state. There's no reason to minister to the Jewish people. They're just lost, and that's that. Versus. 
uh, the pre-trib mindset, which is we're going to be gone. So good luck, Jews. I don't think so. Okay. Both of those things are really, really wicked. Uh, no, it does not. Who slept with whom? What does this have to do with Noah lying drunk in his tent? Uh, so he wouldn't notice what happened. So Ham had sex with his mother. Noah got angry at him, so he cursed his son. Hopefully that is helpful. Many many have become many have become pan millennialists, right? It'll all just pan out in the end, meaning I'm not gonna study this anymore. Yeah, good job. Uh, I often hey anchor, I often wonder what's going to cause this war. Ooh, I guess the Iranian one. Is that what you mean? I think it'll be territorial disputes, but I've heard some say it'll be over the Mahdi's and the twelfth Imam. It could be, yeah, right, because that's kind of the the theological divide between Iran and the rest of the Muslim world, the, the Shia and the Sunnis. The, um, the Shia are, you know, br- have branched off into different historical leaders, and um, so this this twelfth Imam is is who they're waiting for to come back, uh, or whatever, and lead them into battle. And so that's right. The, 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 the caliph, I think is what you mean, uh, is, would be the Sunni idea and the imams would be the Shiite idea, the Shia idea. And then uh, the Mahdi would be just like the final or greatest one of both. So yeah, it's going to be a fight over that basically. Um, territory. Maybe. Also high. <laughs> um, I guess the answer is God is driving his people back for the final stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and that that always makes me think of um you know, Brother Chad Harvey and his teaching on the 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 hunters and the and the fishermen about bringing the Jewish people back to the land. Um, he's going to use different methods to do that. And one is a peaceful, you know, friendly invitation, which is like a fisherman or the hunters. This is Jeremiah. Oh, shoot. Somebody remind me. Not 24, somewhere in there. Um, and then, but the hunters are more violent. They're actually pushing them back. And this is kind of what we're seeing right now, right? In Europe and America and the Western nations where the Jews felt safe, now they don't because of the enemies of the Jews now are everywhere. So they're going to feel compelled to leave and go back to the only place they could feel safe, which is Israel itself. Even though it's a bad time right now, they're like, well, better make my stand here than, you know, die in, in Europe and and that's that. So yeah, that'll that'll drive them home for sure. And you know, ultimately, the uh, the irony or the 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 God part about it is when this this um, the seventieth week of Daniel actually begins, and you have this this covenant with death in the grave um, agreed to by the leaders of Israel. That and you see a temple coming up being built and oop, there's a new temple there that event will draw most i would think most every jewish person from the world back home and uh, of course then god allows the negative part of that fulfillment uh, at the end i've seen some post tribbers Five, five, have, have whack theories as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I agree with you. Um, just because we even agree on that um, perspective, it doesn't mean you're right with God. doesn't mean you have the right teachings on pretty much anything. Uh, oh, Justin's got another one here. Sorry. 
All right, let me take his real quick on my Facebook before we before we proceed. Um, he says, I have another question. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Revelation 13, 1 to 10, talks about a beast out of the sea. Revelation 13, 11 through 14, talks about a beast out of the earth. Yep. It seems like as if these are, one, an Islamic Jesus, and two, a Jewish Messiah, not our Christian Messiah, Yeshua. Do you have any thoughts or opinions on this, or have you considered these positions? Yeah, so the, we ha- I've taught on this a lot, actually. Um, the first beast that rises in Revelation 13 is not a person. It's not an individual. It says it has seven heads and ten horns. The horns are individuals, but there's ten of them on one thing. And one of the heads, it says, is wounded to death, but then it's miraculously healed by Satan. So even if you want to say that is a person, which you really can't, um, based on the symbology of what we're looking at, um, even if you did, there's still seven of them. So what are we talking about here? Seven people at once existing as one person, ten people existing as one person? No. The the beast of, from the sea is the kingdom of the Antichrist, is the kingdom, is the location. That's why it says it's made up of the bear, the lion, and the leopard, because those are Daniel 7 geographic locations. They It's telling you that the beast from the sea is the combination of Iran, Turkey, and Iraq and Syria. That whole Middle East is one place now, and that's the one that comes against Israel. That's what it's saying. That's not a person individually. That's the mechanism. That's the kingdom. That's the geography of it. The second beast is an individual. And it says he has two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. This is very reminiscent of the Islamic Jesus. Okay, the false Jesus of Islam. Because he points you to back to the original beast, the kingdom, the caliphate, and Satan, which is the god of Islam. Right? So that's an individual person. Yes. The first one is not. Just can't. That's my thoughts. Uh, And yes, we taught, I've taught through it a lot of times. And if you want to go to the Revelation uh, study that we did last, year yes uh last year at endtime.church slash live click on the playlist that says revelation study every verse uh, that you're talking about is gone over in detail and uh, hopefully it's proven beyond doubt that what i'm saying okay so no it's not two individual people and it's there is no um jewish messiah in the end times figure basically um, it's all the enemies of Israel who are the focal point. The, and they, there is no, again, there's, I know it's popular. Some people say, oh, well, Israel has to accept this Antichrist as the Messiah. Nowhere, nowhere. There is not one scripture that says that. It doesn't say that at all. It says what they do is they count on this Antichrist to secure their peace. That's different. And he's a Gentile from Assyria, right? The Assyrian. That's not a Jewish person who can be their Messiah for sure. Okay? Right. That's my view. So anyway, you're welcome. No problem. It's not a bother. That's why we're here. That's why we do this this time together. So you get out whatever you want. Uh, do you think end time Persia slash Iran will go south in addition to north and west? Yeah. To conquer and capture the oil fields of Saudi Arabia and the Gulf Arab nations during the second seal. Yes, I do. Um, it do, it says south, does it not in Daniel? Pretty positive. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I think they'll do. Yep. Uh, that could mean in the future Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Bahrain, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, could all be conquered or maybe even destroyed by end time Iran Persia. Yes, that's possible. Yep. Because th- those places that you're mentioning, or if you folks don't know, are right on the opposite side of the Persian Gulf. 
right? Iran's on the one side, those nations are on the other, on the Arabian Peninsula. They would probably be among the first targets. I, uh, I agree. And the oil field to secure those, I think, would be a major um, objective of the invasion. Yes. Do the Jewish teachers even have a grasp of what Daniel lays out? Do you mean generally speaking, like unbelieving Jews? Like, do they, do they teach this in synagogue? Is that what you mean? Um, because basically they don't um, remember if you know that the the order even of the books and how they're separated in the um, Jewish Bible, right? In the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, um, Daniel is not even a prophet. They they don't know what to do with Daniel. Okay, he's not in there with Isaiah and and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and all the minor prophets. He's in the writings part with the the wisdom book, the Proverbs and the Psalms. So there's definitely a humongous um, ignorance and even a refusal to admit that Daniel is a prophet. Period. And I believe that is exactly why Jesus makes a point, the Lord Jesus makes a point in saying Daniel the prophet when he talks about the end times, when he's talking Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, right? When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, not Daniel the wisdom book, the fact that he's not looked at as a prophet by mainstream Jewish teachers for 2,000 years plus now um, is an indictment on them because they're not, they can't see because they don't look at him in that way. So no, they have no idea what he lays out. That's why they couldn't know where he he was being born. That's why, right? Or what time it was like the, 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 the Magi, they knew from Daniel that they should be here. This is about the time because Daniel laid out with his 70 weeks prophecy when Messiah would be there. That's how they knew. And that's why the Jewish leadership was ignorant. If they make the covenant of the, you answer my question while I was typing. Well, bless the Lord. Okay. Um, okay. We got to start wrapping it up. You guys, uh, I apologize. Sorry for the typos. No problem. That's my life. I personally believe Daniel eleven twenty one through 45 is all about the Antichrist. Yeah. Some teach that it starts on 29. Wondering your thoughts on this. I ha- Again, I just would like not to be a pain. Please go to the series that we did on Daniel. There's charts and graphs and all that stuff. And uh, not that that means anyone's right or wrong, but just to show what we think about it. Those are my thoughts. Um, let me try to see if I can pull it up now. Should really just have it saved on my desktop or something. Uh, it's here somewhere. Hang on, I know where it is. It's also on wingsoftheeagle.com slash Daniel, by the way. Here. (laughs) Okay. Man, okay, let me share this screen, then I'll show you. Okay. All right. Um, as you can hopefully see, verse 21 is where I put the discussion of the little horn. He first appears in verse 21, makes a covenant with Israel, verse 24.
So there you go. 29 is definitely after. See, this is the, the main part of it that people miss. And so basically, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Um, it definitely starts in 21 um, because he, there has to be a seven year period at the end where he's doing stuff. He has to make the covenant at the beginning, which is what Daniel says over and over and over three or four different times in the book of Daniel. And then he breaks it. Same guy makes it and breaks it. And so this is one of the things that the pre true crowd has correct. Um, is it? Yes. So Daniel 1121 for sure is where he emerges. It's a little horn. And then he makes the covenant in right after that. And then all through to the end. Yes. Haven't heard anything new about Neom, have you? Um, this that's continuing. Um, I don't know much more other than money is being spent and things are being built. What stage it's at, I don't know right now. That's uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, that's the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia. Where the the crown prince has basically decided to pour billions of dollars into building it into the super futuristic mega city where all the world can come and hang out and uh, be a place of different laws than the rest of Saudi Arabia where you can be basically a Christian stuff like that and and women don't have to cover up and things of that nature we should get Q&A for a couple hours just hashing out these questions well hey uh, today doesn't work out for that, but who knows? Okay, are we good? I think we're good friends. I'm looking around, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I hope Anchor, I hope you saw that picture. And that helps you. Um, deeply appreciate all the input, guys. Excellent discussions. We're just all in the same boat here, right? We're all just trying to get by and understand what God has said about these various things and um, hopefully we're drawing near to him in the spirit and that we'd be united as a church in the spirit. And if this has helped you, this has ministered to you, please uh, help us to continue coming to you and time church slash give and time dot church slash give, give what you can just ask the Lord what you should do with and do that. That's how we roll. Um, and that's how we're brought to you. And there's no other support. There's no other church. There's no other ministry or whatever. It's just us being the church together. I give to a time church. I support it. Um, make sure you do that as well. Okay. Love you all so much. Thanks for the time, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, the different time of day and understanding on that. And uh, we'll see you, Lord willing, on Monday night for hopefully Zechariah. But whatever the Lord has, then that's what we're going to do. And I uh, love you all so much. Till next time, for End Time Church, Pastor Manti, love you lots. Bye. <laughs>